is exactly the same as the one which drew nil nil in Nottingham two weeks ago, and that means basically a 4 4 2 lineup with McLaren and McGarvey the men up front. It also means Tom McAdam returns to the defence for his first game since sustaining an injury, which resulted in his early departure from the first leg at the city ground. And Forrest are on familiar lines, although there's no place for Ian Wallace, and that means there's only one Scott in the lineup, the under 21 international from Hamilton just up the road, Colin Walsh, who wears the number 11. And the main threat to Celtic on the counter-attack will almost certainly come from Gary Birtles, who returned to the city ground two years ago after a short spell at Old Trafford as a £1 million signing. Well, it's like old times here with Celtic Park crammed to capacity and the enthusiasm of the crowd hasn't been subdued in any way by the steady rainfall which has been coming down for the last hour or so. The conditions will be extremely difficult, a very greasy surface, the ball can be expected to skid rapidly off the surface and the wind is blowing across the field in this direction so there may well be some errors, certainly very difficult for defenders. St. Louis' first contribution, this is Chris Fairclough, number four. And the ball is out for a Celtic throw. Steve Hodge, the referee is Andre Dana from Switzerland. From the Celtic dugout, manager David Hay with his aides around him. Wigley's header finding Bertels, uh, Davenport rather. There's Kenny Swain. Good positioning by McGrain. Now McStay. McGrain has made a run on the right. Perfectly judged pass. And that's too powerful for McGarvey. An easy one for Van Brucklem. Good header on from Bertels. Here's Davenport. Good, good play from Davenport. A chance for Forrest. Still Bertels is there. And what a let off that was for Celtic. Davenport and Bertels turning the Celtic defence inside out. Touch on initially from Bertels, who was Davenport, turning Reed and Aiken, making space for the shot, it was well blocked by Bonner, and Bertels might well have scored from the rebound. Pace. Ball gathering pace off the surface, taking it through to Van Brooklyn. Swain now to Walsh. McGrain. Stay reacting very quickly. McGrain took a knock from Walsh. The player keeping the ball in play. Cross. Here's Bobby McLeod. Good tackle from Anderson. Kept his eye on the wall as McLeod poured his way through. Now Paul McStay. On the far side, Mark Reed, supported by Barnes. They've got one for McLeod again. The ball skidding away behind for the Forest goal kick. Swain for Forrest. Played most of his first team matches at Aston Villa on the right flank of defence. Davenport's on side. An error in judgment in the Celtic defence. Here's Davenport with a cross. And once again, a chance goes a begging for Forrest. Steve Wigley, the man, miss kicking in front of goal. Well, once again, Davenport posing problems for Celtic. Getting in behind the right flank. Mark Reed played them on. Driven cross, Woodley in great position here. He swung at the shot and a relief again for Pat Bonner. McGarvey slipping, allowing Fair Clough to take possession. With a Davenport using the pace of Woodley, he's away from Reed. Aiken coming across. And the early cross well taken by Bonner. Not easy tonight for goalkeepers. Gray now to McStay. Here's Sinclair, he's the man supporting the principal strikers, McClure and McGarvey. 
Danny McGrain. Cloud roaming across that midfield area. Looking very hungry for action. It's a big stay. Asking a lot to go through that gap. The ball breaks for Burns. Good close control from Burns. Now McGarvey. Running straight into Paul Hart. But some good close dribbling by both Burns and McGarvey to encourage the Celtic team and supporters. Cloud varying things with a long high ball. There's Mark Reed. A great save from Rumpelgum. And the clearance from Boya. Well, that variation in attack almost gave Mark Reed the opening goal. Celtic coming forward again through Tommy Barnes. Now McLeod. Danny McGrain. Here's Martin McLeod again. And the shot going wide, but that was much more encouraging from Celtic. It was the variation in the tactics from Martin McLeod in midfield which caused the problem there see the first time high lofted ball which caught out the Forest defence Reid coming in at the back, taking it first time in the volley, a fine effort, that's a brilliant save for, from Van Brooklyn. and then the clearance from Boyer Colin Walsh well, wasn't enough room for that manoeuvre he had Davenport ahead of him McGarvey pushed from the back by Hart. Been very difficult so far for McGarvey to show his talent up front. McStay to McLeod. Blocked by Anderson. Here goes Paul McStay and that'll be a penalty kick perhaps. No, the referee weighs play on. And the Celtic players and supporters looking very upset indeed. It's a great attack this, McStay and McLeod. It was McStay trying to force his way forward. Well, that looked to be a clear penalty kick, denied by the Swiss referee. Well, next day, may well be entitled to be agreed. Well, free kick this time. The offender is Steve Hodge, the victim, Tommy Barnes. McLeod and Swain both missing it, allowing Fairclough to come round the back. McLeod cutting off the route to goal. Fairclough's left foot, not so hot, couldn't make the clearance. Here's Graham Sinclair. Now Paul McStay. McLeod playing it across. And the offside flag was up. The flag up, and I think, against Brian McLeod, even before the cross was made. Well, it wasn't McGarvey who was the offender. Reed's header. Played forward by Anderson. Well, that move is undoubtedly encouraged the Celtic supporters. Beautiful now after these two let-offs in the opening ten minutes. Walsh's header. Bertels doing a bit of leaning on Tom McAdam as they went for the high ball. Aiken in a hurry, Reed again in good position on the left. That's for McGarvey. Sinkler waiting in the middle. When Brooklyn got a hand to it and that was enough to deny Graham Sinkler waiting in the middle. Well, the Dutch goalkeeper looking very calm indeed. The pass beyond the right flank of the Forest defence for McGarvey. Cross had Van Brooklyn at full stretch, and the keeper did well. As Barnes with the outswinger, Roy Aiken going for it. Swain that touch it, so that's a Forest goalkeeper. There's Martin McLeod. Well timed tackle from Anderson. Forrest now the chance in the break. Here's Davenport. Bertels ahead of him. Walsh on the left. 
Hodge leaving it now for Anderson. And overcarrying the ball as he came forward. But Cliff Anderson, who's already shown himself to be a good defender, showing how dangerous he can be in the break. Here he is coming on to that crossfield pass from Davenport, taking on McCarran for pace. Reed doing well to score it back. Now McGarvey on the break on the left for Celtic, taking on Fairclough. Just needs a good cross, but Boyer's there. And Celtic have the corner. And that is a signal for Tom McAdam and Roy Aiken to come forward. So Barnes again with a corner kick. Aiming for McAdam, it's too high. Here's Roy Aiken. Great effort from Aiken. Wasted no time at all. And that surely would have beaten Bud Brooklyn a couple of feet lower. Corner kick from Burns. McAdam was underneath it. The ball carried on from the head of Gary Burtles to Aiken. This is good control and the volley just going over the top. And Brooklyn playing the long ball forward. It's won by McAdam. Brian McClair couldn't get on the end of it. And the half-time whistle goes. Brian Clough departs to the dressing room. A very happy man, I've no doubt, because Forrest over the piece have taken the honours in a goalless first half. Two excellent chances in the first half passed up by Forrest early on in the first ten minutes. Then Celtic had one good effort from Mark Reed, and perhaps what denied what looked like a good penalty kick claim when Paul Stomach's day was brought down. But half-time, no scoring here at Celtic Park. Join us right after the break. Welcome back to Celtic Park as Celtic kick off this vital 45 minute spell. Rain still falling heavily here at Parkhead. And no changes in either lineup at half time. Celtic have the full complement of five substitutes, including Jim Melrose, John Halton, Jim Dobbin, with Willie McStay and Peter Letchford. Whereas Forest only have three substitutes, they've only travelled with 14 players. Brian Clough obviously deciding that he knows who he would bring on if he had to, so he's kept the travelling bill down. So Celtic begin again the attempts to break down this resolute forest defence. Garvey linking with Burns. Garvey had a very tough time in the first half, very few chances to show his skill. We saw a few flashes though from Gary Burtles, who's on the ball now. Going away from Mark Reed with a lot of ease. The grain intercepted with a lot of conviction and good anticipation. Here's McLear. McGrain has continued on the right. McGarvey through the middle. Here's McGrain. Pass wasn't good enough. Swain did well. Paul next day getting towards the red ball line. Swain blocks the cross and completes the clearance. Davenport, the man who caused so many problems for Celtic early on. Fouled right away by Tom McAdam. The kick taken by Swain, the target once again is Bertels. He's very good at screening the ball and turning. Chase now for McGarvey, he's going to get there in front of Paul Hart. Get a chance for Celtic. Brooklyn at full stretch, that was a great save. Garvey's first real look at goal. Outpacing Paul Hart and Chris Fairclough, slanting the shot across Van Brooklyn. And not only did he reach it, but he pushed the ball away from Brian McClare. So an encouraging opening for Celtic in the second half. Paul McStay with a corner kick. Right across the face of the goal, McAdam couldn't reach it. Well, if he could reach that, the power in the cross would have given him a chance to send a very strong header towards goal. Ball kept in by Danny McGrain. Burns coming deep to get involved in the build-up. 
That's a long ball for McGarvey to chase. Fair club coming across. So McGarvey's wide run and the corner kick for Celtic. The big man up again. Forest defence so far though has coped very well with these corner kicks. Variation with the low one. Sinclair returns it to Barnes. Good play from Barnes. Aiken up in support of the attack. Determination. Well now Aiken I think clearly took a dive. Paul Hart is challenging. Ian Boyer making his feelings known. Let's check that again. Aiken making the run. You can see the stumble initially. Then taking the ball beyond Hart. Clearly no free, no penalty kick. Bertel's getting up well. Danny McGrain. Stay takes it back. It's an excellent marking among the Forest players. For the one-man freeze on the left, it's Mark Reed. Barnes tried to find him. Here's Wigley. Under pressure from Reed. Good play from the young winger. Davenport setting it up for Hodge. And that is the goal which Celtic were dreading. Steve Hodge makes it 1 0 to Forrest. And remember that a way goal could be crucial to that positive run of the right from Steve Wigley he took on the whole left flank of the Celtic defence by himself a clumsy challenge that from Roy Aiken Wigley with a cross and this was again brilliantly developed inside Davenport teeing it up for Hodge and Bonner had no chance at all McLeod now to Mark Reed. Bonds is on the left touch line now Wigley's the first Defender. His brother McLeod. Aiken coming to the back. Celtic might well need some reinforcements in that area. The turn ball to Aiken from McStay. Drain playing it in. Hart's clearance. Needs some width on the left. Burns is now trying to provide it. Some excellent marking among the Forest defenders. Cloud and Hodge getting a bit hot under the collar. And more accurately, Modern McLeod was he who made the rash challenge, which has given Forrest a free kick. Swain's header picked up by McStay. The Celtic throw it came off Gary Birtles. Once again, you can see how difficult it is for the Celtic player to find a player in space. So, 20 minutes of the match left. 20 minutes for Celtic to break down this Forest defence twice if they are to survive. To be perfectly honest, there aren't many signs that they're capable of doing it. This is better though. And a vital touch. One has tried to find Mark Reed on the left. Reed is out of position now as Wigley is robbed by Barnes. Chance now for Celtic. And Hart taking up good position to intercept the cross. McGarvey turning. Here's Danny McGrain, a first time shot. Okay, Swain doing well, getting the ball away. Here's Melrose. No one waiting for it for Celtic. Cleared by Anderson. Now Tommy Burns. The crossbar and Forrest survived. Well, no question about it. Celtic's best effort in the second half. 
coming from Tommy Burns. Taking it on the drop off the chest. It beat Van Gogh and didn't drop quickly enough. And the Celtic no doubt will be heartened by that. Drain forced to turn it out for a forest throw. No luck for Tommy Burns. A great dipping volley. Davenport looking for Walsh. Aiken has enough pace. So Reid for Celtic. Good flick on from Melrose. McGarry couldn't control it. While well, Hodge showing brilliant control. Reid doing well with the tackle, but he's lesser known for his players like Hodge and Davenport and Wigley. Making a big impression on the Glasgow public. There's Gertles. There's all the work with the left foot. Ravi Anderson, Hodge, as Boyer again in space in midfield. Possession's the name of the game for Forrest now. Now Woodley, if he can catch it, has a great chance to cross. A greasy surface beating him. doing well, the clearing header going wide towards Anderson the cloud robbing Hodge, here's Paul McStay with McGrain ever willing coming up from the back on the right not a good enough cross though, an easy one for Swain and Bertel's now seeking out Davenport to make a lonely run up front appeals for a throw not given Davenport against Aiken pull back to Walsh and a perfect finish, and that surely ends the European competition for Celtic. Forrest bench is jubilant, and that was a brilliant goal. It came right out of defence. Davenport took the pass from Bertels, took on Tom McAdam, then had the courage to take on Roy Aiken coming into the box. A look at the control and the strength he shows here, hits the dead ball line, pulls it back for Walsh, and the calmest of finishes. Swain's clearance collected by Davenport. Here's Mark Reed. Now Barnes. Anderson inviting him to go inside. Reed now to McLeod. Couldn't get it beyond Swain, but here's Paul McStay. Given away though to Buttles. And once again content to thump the long ball upfield, knowing that Peter Davenport will give chase. Here's Roy Aiken now for Celtic. Now McClare. Good shot, well handled by Van Brukelen. They had Melrose closing in for a rebound. Well, this once again shows the quality of the forest keeper. McClare seeing the chance for the shot, he hit it well enough and Van Brooklyn held it well. An indirect free kick given now to Celtic. Just outside the six yard box, which means that the Forest team will have to assemble on the goal line. So the whole Forest team is on that goal line. Well, a very unusual sight indeed. The ball will be played back, and I think it's very difficult to expect it to get through the, the wall, and McLeod doesn't make it. Chance at the far post. That's a corner kick to Celtic. Well, it's a very rare occurrence that the indirect free kick with the whole team in the goal line, but very seldom do you see a goal coming from that. The indirect free kick given for blatant time wasting by the Forest players. That's in the net! Brilliant header from Murdo 
of a cloud. 11 minutes left now. Can Celtic turn the match round? So a corner kick paying off at long last for Celtic. Played a win by next day. A cloud coming for it. Got to it before Hart. And Hodge couldn't clear it off the line. Quigley trying to cross his man. Tommy Bond succeeding too. Aiken coming across. Free kick against Mark Reed. Peter Davenport appeared to make the most of that, although he did appear to be caught by the Celtic fullback. Anderson playing in the free kick. There's Bertels. Davenport with a chance for Forrest. Bonner blocks it. Still the danger's not over, Gary Bertels to Davenport again, is that a penalty kick? No, says the referee, Davenport is aggrieved. And McGrain survives that appeal. Offside flag is up against Davenport. Celtic supporter still defined as the singing support of the favourites. But the cause now surely in Europe this season is lost for Celtic. Losing out to a superb performance on Nottingham Forest. Here's Martin McLeod. Now it's about consolation goals. Van Brooklyn coming out to claim the ball in front of Brian McClare. And now the 90 minutes have come and gone. The referee checking his watch. No stoppage time. The final whistle goes and Nottingham Forest qualify the quarter-final of the UEFA Cup with an absolutely superb away performance. They thoroughly deserve the victory with a controlled performance from first to last, scoring two excellent goals. Steve Hodge got the first, the second from Colin Walsh. Celtic battled right to the end, got that late goal from Murray McLeod. But on the night, the honours go quite justifiably to Nottingham Forest. I doubt if anybody would argue with our commentator Jock Brown with that verdict on the match. A disappointing night for Celtic and Nottingham Forest. Brian Clough, the third success of a away victory in Europe. Ian St John, that's fantastic, isn't it really? Tremendous, great result for them and I must say right away that they did thoroughly deserve to win mm. the game. I thought it was a great performance by Forest. I wonder though Ian if you feel now in retrospect that the match perhaps hinged on the penalty kick claim that Celtic had in the first half. This is how it came up and this is how Jock Brown called it at the time. Let's take a look at it first. Yeah sure, I mean I, I was at the game. Blocked by Anderson, here goes Paul McStay, and that'll be a penalty kick perhaps, no, the referee waves play on. And the Celtic players and supporters looking very upset indeed. Good it is Ian, what do you think? Well, at the time, I was at the game, I didn't think it was a penalty, but looking at that now, you'll see Hart at number five, that was a rugby tackle on McStay there. So obviously it was a definite penalty kick. You know, so I mean, Celtic obviously must feel unlucky looking at yeah. that because that was a vital time had they got a goal in the first half. You were making the point watching the game that Forrest won this match on the wings. Tonight, Celtic didn't yeah. have Davy Proven. I wonder if you felt yeah. that that was significant. Well, probably it was because, you know, Proven is a good winger, of course, and uh, I felt that they missed him on that flank. And Tommy Burns didn't have one of his better games down the other side. You know, his use of the ball wasn't quite what I would expect from Tommy. Uh, so I felt, OK, Celtic didn't have the width. Now, you saw the two goals from Forrest, and both of them were created from wide men. Mm -hmm. Wiggly in the, for the first goal, who went to the byline, cut it back, and it's a goal. And then Davenport, who raced down the left, got to the byline again, cut it back. I mean, it's what we would say, you know, wingers, when we talk about wingers and yes. traditional width. Mm -hmm. now, the Forest had that width tonight, the Celtic didn't. And to be fair also, that the Swiss goalkeeper, whom Brian Clough yeah. wisely decides that he wants to hang on to... A Dutchman, he had a, he's a Dutchman. A Dutchman, sorry. A, yeah. He had a super game, I thought, Van Brooklyn. He did do. I mean, he didn't have an awful lot of direct shots to save, but one or two low down, which he, he got to, uh, and one he had to deal with uh, when he tipped Tommy Burns' effort mm -hmm. under the crossbar. But other than that, he didn't have an awful lot of direct shots. And I think that was... Uh, I got the feeling tonight that, that Celtic were wanting two touches at the ball when one would have yeah. done and they were looking to sort of tee up rather than just have a batter. Mm -hmm. Finally, Ian, how much do you think was this uh, another triumph for Brian Clough? He's got such an extraordinary style and presence, yeah. the man, but he keeps yeah. doing results like this very briefly. Well, very briefly, he came up here saying that there's no chance, but obviously all the time he felt he had a little bit of a chance, and mm -hmm. his experience in European competitions, I think, paid off tonight. Well, it's With Murray International medals.